So thanks for your interest of the book, Methods and Biostatistics with R. I'm John Michelli, a faculty member at the Johns Hopkins School of Public Health. And I'm Ciprian Canicciano. I'm a professor in the Department of Biostatistics at Johns Hopkins. Brian Caffa, I'm another professor in the Department of Biostatistics. Uh, we're all authors of the book here. Yeah. So I actually got my master's from Hopkins, and that is what this book is based on, a course that we took for our methods in biostatistics. And when I took it, there wasn't a book. Right? Was, was I your instructor? Yeah, I think, yeah, you were my, you were my <laughs> teacher. Yeah, and my yeah. advisor. How'd so it I go? It went okay. <laughs> uh, I stayed with it. Um, <laughs> the lack of a yeah. book was terrible, and the yeah. class sucked. Yeah, because it was all based on your notes. <laughs> right. That's, That's right. why we needed something rigorous, because I just wasn't going to cut it. <laughs> For most people. So, so we took the disorganized mess that was my notes, and then Ciprian took over the class. And well, it, it wasn't dis disorganized. It, it's highly organized because Brian is highly organized. But it's <laughs> never been accused of that. <laughs> <laughs> but the truth is that Brian likes to write the notes, very short notes, and then go in front of the the entire class and just talk about stuff. And that was just too short for me, so I needed to, to develop more the notes and, and have the book. So I, I couldn't do what Brian is doing. Well, that's because he had a tablet, so he could draw on it, so he could just ad lib for that and just start yeah. squiggling stuff. So that really extended the class a bit. Yeah. yeah. I do well, I do like the improv, right? Like the class improv. Yeah. The the problem with it being, of course, that like I think the percentage of correct things that like you were getting when you were in the class is <laughs> Was way lower, <laughs> non vetted, just off the cuff, non, non vetted distribution off. function. Yeah, let stuff. me just riff on. Yeah, yeah. But the truth is that there was a big proportion of students who were asking for a book, be it you know a large or a small book, but something to refer to, and and we thought about putting something together that combines all the things that we would have liked to have in a book, which is methods and uh, data analysis and R. That was the. So I think when I took it, uh, there were a lot fewer resources online for kind of R, uh, but I still think during that course we were kind of starving for seeing how things were actually done yeah. in the class. So I think that's why we combined a lot of the stuff with R, so that you could see the exact code we were doing and what we were doing kind of step for step, right? Yeah, and John, you know, when when we started doing this, uh, one of the reasons why I asked you to be on the book, whether you would like to be on the book, was your expertise in R, and. I know that you know you have all these new tools that you would like to share with others. And why did you accept to be part of the book? And, and what do you think is, is special about adding that component to the book? So I think a lot of the new stuff coming along, like Dplyr and the Tidyverse, really allows a concise set of code for people to see that says, like, I can do this. It's only like five or six lines. It's not super complicated. It's totally tractable. And some of the verbs and the way you manipulate data are actually somewhat intuitive if you've seen it enough. So I just wanted to make it clear to people that you can analyze data with not like lines and lines and lines of code. The tools there are super powerful. And just seeing that in words and then seeing it in code and how short it is, I think is very empowering for you know, students. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that, that adds a pretty unique aspect to the book in that if you, if you look at most, like you, like you said, there are a lot of resources online, but most of them fall into one of either two categories. They, they're either sort of very um, implementation oriented books that tell you how to do things or they're very kind of theoretical foundational books and both sets are great um, but but this this is one of relatively few of the attempts that tries to join the two to not only give you the foundational ideas and the theoretical ideas but show how you put those theoretical and foundational ideas into practice and not just not just the application part of it but the actual nuts and bolts how to with programming uh, which is, I, I think, is a, is a pretty unique aspect of this of this book. Yeah, the, the other thing for me was very important to kind of just revisit simple concepts, simple concepts in biostatistics, which yeah. which turned out to be much harder than than I expected, especially to teach others. <laughs> it's amazing it's how amazing. complicated simple things are. It's yeah. amazing <laughs> how complicated simple things are, and yeah. simple things like what is a random variable, what is a bootstrap, yeah. when should you use it, and when should you not. These are things that uh, you know I learn. I relearned them as I was writing the book, and, and that has been something that I wanted to share with others. I, I think what was interesting about that, and we all had a lot of conversations of this sort, where we take some idea that we've been teaching for years and has been taught forever, 
and then when you really dig into it, it, it it's quite confusing. And, and then you can understand why students are hitting hurdles because we've just kind of gotten used to the confusion. <laughs> I think re re writing it forced us to like say, oh, well, maybe we should smooth over these edges a little bit and you know, really you know, develop this philosophy or develop the foundation a little bit more as, as we teach it. But I mean, foundationally though, one of the things I think that's different about this book in some respects, where you say it's like a modern book, is that resampling techniques are heavily discussed. Yeah. Right, yeah. so I don't think we ignore the fact that computers have been around yeah, and are used right. for analysis all the time. Whereas it feels like some other books may may do that sometimes, or it just seems like why not just resample? Well, it, it was interesting when you and I talked about the bootstrap, right? When you saw it, I think you saw it in the first chapter, or mm -hmm. and you came to me like, "Japan, this cannot fly." It's pretty <laughs> early. That's pretty early. <laughs> we have to put it somewhere else. Yeah. Uh, so these are the types of things that we, we kind of did. We, we, we tried to take some of these concepts that are thought to be exotic and just try to demystify them as soon as possible and, and take away that anxiety about, you know, things like sampling and uh, just, just take that away and say, no, it's, it's a very basic concept. It's a very powerful one. It's something that, you know, you'll encounter a lot. So why not just start with something like that? Yeah. So. That, that is kind of a modern, so, so the modern take, right, the data science-y take on, uh, on statistics is to, to spend as much time as possible like living in the data, right? And that's what, that's what a lot of these resampling techniques, or part of the reason why I think uh, modern data scientists love these resampling techniques is they're very, very data-oriented. And I think what we do is by adding a lot of that stuff, and especially updating it, because I think the original treatment of bootstrapping and things like that was, was very dated and classical in the, in the previous versions. Um, what, what, we, what we do is we, we, you know, we kind of tell people about living in the data in that way, but, but we kind of give them the, the sort of, well, why are you doing this and you know, what are the limitations of doing this and what are you really accomplishing? And, and you know, I think that's, that's an important aspect to it. So it's sort of like takes the kind of modern data scientist take, but then it you know, adds the, the foundations to it. Yeah, and one, one other thing that I, I think is very important is that, you know, I mean, we, we joked a little bit about where we started, but, but a lot of the initial materials were, were fantastic, and part of that was because you put them together, but part of that was also because the Hopkins Biostat Department has been teaching this for a while, yeah. and, and I know that you also took a yeah. lot from, from others in terms yeah, of Chuck inspiration, Rody. and, yeah. and uh, so I think that... Ron Brookmeyer also taught the class before. So I think that a little bit... If we may say so, I think that the, the book does represent a little bit of the culture and, and the way we think uh, here at Hopkins in, in the biostat department. Yeah, the legacy of a multi-decade course, right? It's yeah. been it's been around at least twenty-five years or so. It's not. It's definitely not our oldest course, but it's 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 a pretty old one. It's been it's been around as long as the master's program has been around. And it used to be the PhD methods class, um, but it, but I, I somewhere around ten years ago. We separated the the masters and the PhD class, and so the, this this one became the, the masters class, and uh, we switched up the PhD program. But but I I think it still could be a very reasonable very first PhD applied class as well. Yeah, I think that's a good point because I think there are great undergrad books and there's the sta pretty standard PhD level books, whereas the masters kind of niche kind of is a little bit harder to fill, and I think this tries to fill some of that gap where you have either someone in, the ma in a Master's of Biostatistics or Statistics uh, program, but also people from other departments who are really trying to dig in, get a more kind of mathematical foundation. And that's what comprises the class mostly, right? Yeah, and I think that probably it's fair to, to expect people from other areas outside of statistics and biostatistics to want to learn these, these techniques and these tools. And if they have the right, you know, uh, mathematical background, then I, I think that the book would be a good start for, for, for a lot of people. And we also cover tricks, right? So we cover a lot of like the common tricks that people know, you know, just the little like, oh, add up these kinds of random variables, you get this kind of random variable. And now we have computational tricks too that, that are, are not so much foundational but are kind of like lore in an area. Right. Right, and the only way you learn them is by being led into the lore somehow. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's there is an element of uh, in this book of, of uh, putting putting forward at least some of the tricks. You know, you can't you can't put all that stuff into a book, but we, you'll get some of the tricks in here. Yeah. 
All right, well, thanks again for your interest, and hope you enjoy the book. Thank you.